Clint. You there? Step away. Hey, Clint. <laughs> I can't hear you. You're on mute. Is that better? A little bit. Yeti Nano. There you go, there you go, there you go. And MacBook Pros. Uh, can you hear me? I can. How you doing? <laughs> can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, I was trying to do it without having to wear the headset, but oh, okay, it's not working. Okay, all right. Well, you look right. good, healthy. How you doing? I'm doing well. And yourself? I'm doing good. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's okay. Yes. 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 Nice. Yeah. Is, well, Georgia's released their restrictions, so. Um, when do you think you're going to have an event? Well, they have not um, released the restriction of 10 or more. <laughs> so. <laughs> Doesn't help. Right. I mean, you know, it's better for me to do things live if I could just only talk to 10 people in a room. So. Yeah. I'm the same way. We were going to uh, go to Dallas this month, but the most they would allow us to put in the room would be 50 people. Because it had 25% of the capacity of the room. And I said, nah, it's not worth it. I need mm -hmm. at least 100. So yeah. I'm hoping yeah. next month. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we have a lot of um, requests or people asking when we're going to do in person events. So that's, you know, good to know that people are still wanting to do that. Um, so. Yeah, we actually we, we have the same thing. We get quite a few people asking when we're going to do it. Um, that's just waiting for the states. Yeah. Yeah. So, is what it is. You know, it's it's a new way to figure it out. We've been doing quite a few uh, online events, and they've been working out, but it's just not the same. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> Especially for you know people that are used to you know when you're like forty five and up, you know, yeah. there's something you know that's concrete about in person. <laughs> Completely. Yeah. Your tickets go way down when it's online. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. So, well, yeah. you know, we, we just, um, well, what we saw as we started looking at our data is that, um, so our target market is women um, 45. So mm -hmm. um, we're actually seeing a split, like half of those women want in person, half of those women want online. So we're just, oh, wow. yeah, so we're developing more online platforms with the intention to still, you know, do some in-person events when we can. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I, we've looked at that as well as if we can, if we could monetize the online um, to come close, you know, at least uh, two thirds of the way to what we do at the live event, then we'll stick with online because you don't have to travel. Yeah. 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 But so yeah you also though lose that edge you know when you're when you're out there and you're talking you're teaching the event all the time <laughs> i've already yeah. lost it i know it sucks <laughs> <laughs> i think i want to say it more now when this first happened i was just like oh my god i'm ready to go outside now i'm like yeah oh, i think i like this <laughs> but yeah no, so um but i'm looking forward to getting back out there yeah. yeah. I've actually been kind of turning over the um, reins of um, doing most of the speaking to my team so I could focus more on being the CEO mm -hmm. um, and just getting the foundation really solid of the company. Um, I find I, I enjoy doing that. 
um, more than speaking. I get a lot of anxiety with speaking, even though I love doing it. It's just so much, you know, I'm exhausted right after. So I'm like, yeah, you know, so um, I've been turning the reins over. So m more of my team has been speaking and I'm enjoying seeing them doing that. Yeah, that's good. I mean, that's the way you're going to become more profitable as well, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Because there's only one of you. If you can clone yeah. yourself, then <laughs> you can run more events. Yeah, and you know, it's funny because I, you know, I feel like they do a better job at speaking. You know, I'm, I just kind of fell into this role. I'm not what I would call a natural speaker, but um, our lead trainer, he's such a natural. I'm like, ooh, we're going to make some money with you. <laughs> And he's selling you the whole time, you know. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you can never sell yourself as better than someone else. Yeah. 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 So that helps. Yeah. That's good. All right. Well, I'm going to try to get us started because, um, you know, I'm I try to stay up on technology, but this is new to me. So I've never went live on Facebook from Zoom. So. Okay. Are you just going to interview me or what, what do you want to do? I can move this down. Um, yeah, I'm just going to let us talk. You know, we have good chemistry, so we can just talk back and forth. Um, you know, I don't mind you doing most of the talking, you know, say whatever you need to say, but um, just, you know, kind of impromptu. Sure, sure. Okay. okay. All right. Let's see. And this is, this is all about the event on Wednesday. Yes. I mean, we could give them a sneak peek of, you know, we could show you off a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, okay. On my timeline, uh, share on a page, okay. Oh, my goodness. technology i know it's it's saying i'm not authenticated what does that even mean we tried this the other day and everything worked and it out. worked yeah i know and then the gremlins get in your machine between the time <laughs> which it worked the time you really need it right okay so it says preparing so okay it must be doing it okay i don't know what that was okay yeah, i hate that problem I do know there's a 20 second delay. Correct. I've so, heard that. Okay. okay, we're live. So I'm going to try to set up my IG as well. They, they won't be able to see you, but I'm just going to be telling them to come over here if they want to actually see you. I like what you do with the graphic in the back. Ah, you like that, huh? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Hello, everyone. This is Chantel Owens with the Georgia Tax Lean Bootcamp. And I have a very special guest today. I'm so excited um, to bring on Clint Coons from Anderson Advisors. Clint is actually my advisor. Um, so I must say, I haven't used him like I should. So we're going to talk about that. But um, I'm very excited to have Clint on. Clint has a wealth of knowledge. He is the go-to person for asset protection. As a matter of fact, if you Google asset protection, his, his picture is going to pop mm -hmm. right up. And I'm so excited to have you here today, Clint. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hey, How thanks for having today? me on. Oh, I'm doing excellent. Thanks. <laughs> Could be better if the weather hadn't changed. It was 85 in Washington this weekend, and now it's back to its normal gray and windy and possibly rainy. Oh, wow, wow. So, but that's the normal weather in Washington, right? I know, but you get a few glimpses of sunshine, <laughs> and you get excited. You think, man, I want to get out on a boat or do something. That's all a tease. Okay. All right. Well, I just want to say to IG Live, I am on Facebook Live, so if you can come join us on Facebook Live 
so that you can hear and you won't miss anything that Clint Coons, our special guest speaker today, has to say. Um, he's going to also be speaking with us on our webinar Wednesday. So if you haven't registered for that webinar, please go ahead and register. And someone from our team is going to drop that in the comments for us. Mo, could you drop that in the comments, the, the URL for them to register? But also, while you're at it, join us on Facebook because you don't want to miss anything. So we're going to give you all like two minutes. We're just going to talk a little bit before we get started. All right, Clint. So you're going to be joining us uh, Wednesday. I'm so excited about that. I don't know why we haven't done that before, but you know, I'm happy that we're doing it now. <laughs> I know. I mean, the environment makes it a perfect time to do it because we can't go live. Yes, so, yes, yeah. yes, yes. So. Um, before I get into what you're going to be talking about, mm -hmm. I just want to let everybody know how we met. So I met Clint at uh, Think Realty and Clint was on stage and he said something that, well, he said a lot of things that caught my attention. But one of the things that you said, Clint, um, that time was, you know, if your business name is, you know, Georgia Tax Lien Bootcamp LLC, then it's very important that you use that business name and not just any name, you know, because you could be sued as if you're doing business personally or in some other name. So I thought that that was interesting. And so tell us a little bit about that before we actually get started on what you're going to be talking about. Yeah, I think I remember um, it was all centered around business cards, the way people portray yes. themselves. And they'll oftentimes choose a business card that doesn't relate back to their business and it doesn't have the correct business name on it. So I see a lot of people do this. They'll, they'll leave off the LLC. They'll leave off the ink on their card. I'm like, well, it's all one and the same. But in reality, not really. Because when you have me that card and if there isn't an ink on there, an LLC, and unless you filed for a DBA that relates back to a business entity, then I, as the recipient of that card, may rely upon some conversation we have, take action upon reliance in your statements, and then be injured as a result of you either having one too many drinks when we were talking, it was just all fun and games in your mind, or you just forgot, you weren't serious, and next thing you know, they're suing you. So I tell people that if you're gonna hand out a business card, make sure it accurately reflects the business name. So you put people on notice. Hey, you're not dealing with me as an individual. You're dealing with a limited liability company. You're dealing with a corporation. And therefore, if you want to sue, you can sue that entity, but you're not coming after me personally. And that's, that's the important thing there. In addition to that, what I see a lot is people will create an LLC and then they'll put their name on the card and they'll have their name listed as a director or shareholder or something that doesn't even relate to the LLC. And so those are, you know, common mistakes that when I get it, somebody's setting up their business entity on their own, they're not experienced in creating these entities and they're, and they're going to make some mistakes along the way because you just don't know what you don't know. And what oftentimes where this is going to be brought out is when you're involved in a lawsuit, they'll say, well, why didn't you do this? If you'd done that, you could have been protected here, but you're not because you didn't know. And so that's what we try to do, you know, is just tie up those loose ends. So that's what, uh, immediately I saw when we started talking, I was like, oh man, this is going to be a client right here. But I didn't realize how much work it would take. <laughs> yes. So Clint, I, I think we're having some technical difficulties. It's telling me that oh. our live has ended already. I don't know what's going on here. So I'm going to attempt to restart this. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Okay, I want to go live on our page. Georgia Tax Lean Bootcamp. Okay, it said it's preparing the live stream. Let me just make sure.
Well, people are still listening on Instagram, and so they said that's okay. great news. Great to know. Okay, mm-hmm. so all right, we're starting over. So, all right. Well, um, well, thanks for that information. I remember at Think Realty, I was just like, I wasn't even a speaker then, and nope. um, you know, I was just thinking like, man, I would love to be able to share the information I have, you know, on the stage like that. And it was just like a short while after that that i was able to do that i thought that that was pretty amazing so um you know and now i you know really have an association with think realty as well and so uh they're pushing me to do a national platform so i'm excited to even be considering that you should i mean you have such an exceptional product and personality i think it's you've got a lot of potential there and it's something that so many real estate investors don't realize there are other opportunities out there doesn't take a lot to get into it, but the re- returns can be huge. Yes. And so I find it's not very often where I'm intrigued by someone's strategies and, and you really intrigued me uh, when we <laughs> sat down and started talking about it. Yeah. So I could so see what, that. So really quickly, because I you know, I could go all off topic, but so what do you think about people who say, um, you know, those that can do, do, you know, because I get that a lot, you know, from mm-hmm. people like, well, if you're actually a tax lead investor, why, how are you? over here coaching people what do you, what do you think about that well i i think that you, it comes through when you talk to someone you can tell whether or not they're genuine uh in, in what in the information they're relaying to you whether or not they're actually doing it and you know with with, with you and in, in what you've been doing and you can show concrete results uh, that you've been able to achieve for yourself and those people that work with you i think that speaks volumes you're not about i mean I can sniff it out because I'm an active real estate investor. I don't know what I'm over probably close to 150 properties by now. And when you sit in front of someone and they tell you, Oh, this is what I'm doing. This is how you make money in real estate. You go, eh, maybe about seven years ago, that strategy worked, but I don't see it working for me right now. And I'm in buying properties every month. So it comes across to people and the proof is in, you know, the success that they like your students have that go through trainings that you've taught and they're able to find the deals and put them together. I think that just tells everyone everything they need to know. All right, Clint. I don't know if it's me or what, but I am having so much difficulty with this uh, Facebook. We're live. Account. We are? It says live on Facebook. At least that's what I see. Okay. Maybe somebody else can tell me. Are we live on Facebook? IG people, do y'all see us on Facebook too? Because <laughs> I'm getting... Um, an error message. Okay, well, it's show, it, show, it says live. Okay, maybe it's just me, user error. Well, thank you, Clint. I appreciate that, you know, because I get that a lot, you know. But anyway, so talk to me about what you're going to talk to our students about on Wednesday. I'm so excited for them. We never yeah. really showcase you in our free class. We, you all, we, they only get you in the paid class. So I'm excited that, you know, everybody will get to see you now. Right on. So on Wednesday, what we're going to do is I'm going to teach you about how to do this business the right way. Because so many people, when they want to get started in real estate, or maybe they've been investing for a while, they don't realize that there's several different legs to the stool, as I like to refer to it. You've got the asset protection leg, you have the tax planning leg, and you have the business planning leg. And it doesn't matter where you're at in your investing career, whether you're just starting out or you've been doing this for a while, you really need to focus on all three because if you don't, you're going to trap yourself and you're going to put yourself into a situation down the road where your business is not able to expand like you had hoped it, it, it could. And you see other people around you just, you know, hitting, you know, home runs after home runs. You're wondering, why are they able to do that? What's holding me back? And many times it's how you've set up your business. And something that I discovered when I started practicing 20 years ago, we were working on, you know, going out, teaching the events on asset protection. And, and then we started in the tax planning as we built our firm up even more. But I would sit down with investors and, and I would talk to them and I would say, you know, they're doing all right. And then I would sit down with certain investors and they were just leagues beyond these other people. And I remember asking one of these investors uh, at one point in time, said, you know, why is it, I mean, how did you get here? What, what have you been doing? And he came down, he said, listen, it, it what really taught me, I, I met an individual who showed me how to set it up as a business. 
And they told me, he said, you got to focus on the asset protection so you don't get sued. You got to make sure you're minimizing your taxes, but you don't want to minimize your taxes to the point where it doesn't give you the ability to borrow money. And then so your business needs to be structured so that if you want to go out and do these other things, that you can now qualify to do that. Because when you start to get to a point where you want to do larger deals, you're going to need to leverage. And if you're going to leverage, you have to have your returns look in a certain way. He said, this is something that I was taught and it's what helped me build my business. And that's why I'm operating at the level I'm at right now. And that really stuck with me when I heard that, I don't know, 17, 18 years ago. And it reformulated everything that I did from that point on, because it's so easy to get caught up on the tax side of things or the asset protection. I mean, I was caught up on the tax side. I eliminated my taxes for four years where I didn't pay anything in taxes. I can make a half a million, $750,000 pay zero federal income tax. And people would just be shocked. They're like, I want your strategies. But the problem was, is that I wasn't building a business. I, I was missing out on opportunities because I wasn't paying taxes. Lenders would not work with me. And so that's just, I mean, maybe you're not at the point where you want to work with lenders, but you might be there. And so I had to rethink everything I was doing personally as well to make sure that I was growing the business the right way. You know, we just went through a situation, we're still in it with this pandemic, and the government released all these programs for individuals to obtain money to keep their business afloat. And they released so many of the restrictions that they would normally have on gaining access to these funds. But there was one thing they wanted. They wanted proof that you have an actual business. And so what did that mean? Send us a copy of your tax return. Give us a profit and loss that you have for your business. And when you know it, we're helping people obtain these funds and we're asking for this information so we can get them the money that they're entitled to. And I get back information from clients. They'll say, well, here's my profit and loss statement. And it's on a napkin. I actually took a picture of it when it came in. <laughs> I was like, are you serious? I'm going to send a you napkin. Know, because you know, I'm like <laughs> in the same boat, like, you know, so what, what can I say? Yeah, but so here's what happens. When an opportunity presents itself, you're not, you can't take action. So you action. miss out on that opportunity. And that's why this type of planning is so important because, you know, the really great deals that come along, they're not just sitting out there for waiting for someone to come pick them. They're going to hit and the people that see them and find them the quickest and are able to take action because they put themselves in that situation are going to score. And if you're not in that situation at that right time, then it's not going to happen for you. And that's why I've told people, you know, they'll say, well, you've been lucky on some of your deals. No, nope. you create your own luck. It's where planning meets opportunity. And so if you've done all of the background work to get yourself up, get the education so you know where to spot the opportunities, how to put those deals together, have the right structure there, because the education is probably the most important concept of all of this, knowing what to do and then seeing the opportunity and then executing on it. A lot of people missed out on this. And you, know, you hear on the federal news uh, or the news that people couldn't get these loans from the federal government and that somehow it's the federal government's fault. It's not, it's the individual's fault because they hadn't been planning. And so unfortunately that hurts investors. And so what I want, we want to do is show you how to put yourself in that situation so you can capitalize on those opportunities. So I have a question about that, but mm -hmm. really quick, because I have people, I have way more people on Instagram. So won't y'all come over? They're asking me, who am I talking to? They're excited about the information. Join us on Facebook. So just go to um, GA Tax Lean Bootcamp on Facebook, and then you'll actually be able to see Clint and um, hear the two-way conversation. So, uh, but uh, two questions about that. One question is, um, is there still opportunity for people to take advantage of the um, payroll protection program and the economic disaster loan? Um, yes, there is. Uh, you can take advantage of both. They opened up the EIDL again, and they're still some, uh, taking applications on the Triple P. One of the things that was interesting that came out of the Triple P is they thought there was going to be this mad rush again, and, and the money would go relatively quickly. But a lot of small business owners are reevaluating whether or not the PPP makes sense for them because you got to use the money up within eight weeks. And if you don't have anybody on payroll, 
then you'd have to go back and hire people. And if your business is closed, what are they going to do? Sit around and, you know, mm -hmm. watch paint dry. Mm -hmm. But see, or this is a problem. Even sustain the business by hiring people if you can't afford to pay for everything else. <laughs> yes. But see, this is, um, I think, for some business owners where they're being short-sighted in, the, in their planning is that they don't see the opportunity here. Let's say that you're in a business that you know is fundamentally going to change as a result of this. And the government gives you $50,000 and they say, listen, you got to use 75% uh, of that on payroll for the next two months. So A, do you go and hire all those same people again that are already getting unemployment and probably making more money than you were going to pay them anyways, <laughs> <Yeah>. right? <laughs> we run into that problem. We put out, uh, we, we actually were trying to hire 10 employees a couple of weeks ago and uh, uh, I think four or five of them, 25% of the applicants declined because they found out what we were paying and they said, yeah, don't need it. I make more money. But um, so here's the thing. You apply for the PPP. It doesn't say you have to hire those same people back right now. What it's saying is you have to spend it on payroll. Mm -hmm. So why not hire people that could help your business, change your business? That if you have a problem with technology, you don't know how to be on Facebook, you don't know how to be on Instagram, how to build that social presence, go out and hire those people to create all that for you in eight weeks. So when you come out of this or this period's over, now your business has been set up to meet that challenge. A lot of people don't see it that way, unfortunately, and I think they're going to be stuck in a situation where they don't have the money and it's going to be difficult for them to capitalize when things do open back up again. Mm -hmm. But you so, should do it. Yes. So that being said, um, you know, just speaking from experience, um, you know, you mentioned the person who had their P&L on a napkin. And they probably had over some period of time known that they should be taking care of these things. And I know I can speak from experience. A lot of people who have um, grown their business to a certain level and don't have that are just ashamed, right? They just don't want to go into somebody's office and say, look, you know, I have this business that I've had for 10 years and I don't have my stuff together, right? Mm -hmm. So you know, I'm speaking, I'm asking you because I had that experience with you and I felt like you were very um, approachable with that. And you just kind of opened the door like, look, I deal with this all the time. So can you talk about that for a quick second? You know, it happens all the time. It's the way I look at it, it's high value and low value work. And I am just as guilty of this as anyone else. Uh, you know, you look at things and many times we think, you know what, I'm just going to do that. I can take care of that. I, I'll get to it eventually. And so what you end up doing is you get, you know that's there and it festers. So number one, it's going to stop you from putting 110% into what you want to do because that is a weight that's going to drag you down because you still know you need to do it. And then if you do attempt to do it, that's not the best use of your time. The best use of your time is out there finding real estate deals, not putting your books together. Hire a professional to do it. You'll always be money ahead. And I think that's something that all business owners go through this. You know, I, I'm a jack of all trades. I'm going to do everything for my business. You got to learn to let go and just focus on what makes you money and let other people take care of the small stuff, what I call the low value work, mm -hmm. because that's where you're going to help, you know, focus on that business planning leg and find mm -hmm. success. So what do you think is the tipping point? Because when you first get in, get started in business, more than likely you're uh, self-employed, right? It's just mm -hmm. you and maybe a spouse or some other people. And you really do have to manage the budget because there's really not a lot of money coming in. And then as it starts to grow, I know for me, it became more of, okay, I do I, when I hire employees, now I have a payroll. So it's kind of hard to hire, you know, experts to do other stuff. So where do you see when you work with businesses is the tipping point of not only financially, but the mindset of the business owner? Yeah. So it comes down to if you were to hire someone, they'll say, well, it's going to eat up all my profit. Granted, it will, but what you're missing out on is by bringing that person on, it's going to free up more time for you. So if you have more time, because that's something we always run out of, if you had more time, could you do more deals? 
And if you have confidence in your ability because you've received the right education, you know where to find the, the opportunities that are out there, how to run this type of business, you know, investing in tax liens, then that should be a no brainer for you. You should know that once you can afford to do it, even if you're not going to make any money and you're going to maybe even lose a little bit of money for those first two months, will at the, will after three, four or five months, will you be at a profitable point where you have more money coming in because it's freed up your time? Okay. It, that's the way I look at things. And I see a lot of business owners struggle with that. They don't see the, that the investment they make back into their business will not produce immediate results. It's never going to do that, but it will over time, it will create the results for you and you'll end up being more profitable. Otherwise you're just going to get stuck because when you're never going to feel as if you could justify that investment. Cause that's what it is. People see it as an expense. And what you really need to do is change your way of thinking and look at it more as an investment in your business when you bring someone on, but you don't have to bring them on as employee. There's a lot of different ways you can bring someone into your business to provide assistance with not hiring someone where you work with, you know, a uh, virtual admin or you work with a remote bookkeeper where you're paying them just a, a set fee to do your books for you. So they're not your employee, but they're providing that much needed service. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I've gone all around the Marbury Bush, right? And uh, <laughs> I know my team is going to be like, you were supposed to just uh, ask Clint what he was talking about. But, you know, I haven't talked to you in a while and yep. I really need to get back on your calendar. <laughs> But um, so, um, you know, you're going to be talking about um, asset protection. Correct. And tax planning on mm -hmm. Thursday. Is that correct? That's correct. All right. So are you going to be saying anything that, that you didn't say here today? Well, I'm not going to say anything about what I covered today. That's going right. to be all new material. <laughs> well, I just wanted, I wanted everybody else to hear that because, you know, we've, you, you've given us a lesson just today. So, um, people, I'm really excited. Um, really, Clint is, um, you know, I refer everybody to Clint because um, his ability to, what, one of the things I really love about you, Clint, is that your brain reminds me of my brain. So you're always thinking like, okay, if this happens, this happens. What if this happens? So it's not just like right here, but it's like 10 scenarios that could happen and what should happen if that happens. So when you're dealing with an advisor, that's really what you need. So I, you know, I, I just hope that people join so that they can hear you uh, speak on uh, Wednesday. Excellent. Yeah, well, we're going to talk about corporations, LLCs, what is the right form you should use for your business, touch a little bit on land trusts as well. So we're going to, we got a lot of information that we're going to pack into that short amount of time. So it'll be yeah, well Clint, worth it. I time. really want to give you like all the time, but we got to talk about tax liens too. I know, and I know. What I'm going to do is that I want us to do a series of topics and just, you know, talk online since we're at home anyway. Yeah. <laughs> So, all right, all right. Well, um, before we go, is there are there any questions that you all have for Clint? Just one question before we go. I'm not. I'll let you ask some. You have to register to actually ask all the questions. Um, but is, is there any one question you want to ask? Let's see. I can't even see Facebook, unfortunately. I just it was there. I saw it. They said we were live, but I, we are. Only thing I see is Zoom, so I can't see if there are any questions on Facebook. So, uh, let's see. All right. Well, I don't, I can't, I'm having trouble <laughs> getting to the question. So, um, anyway, Clint, it was wonderful um, talking to you and seeing you again. Um, I can't wait to have you on Wednesday, and I can't wait to, you know, schedule some other. Uh, lives for us to talk all right great so wednesday it is all right I all right thanks for having me on all right thanks bye-bye tell your wife i said hi i will yeah <laughs> okay all right all right take care bye, -bye. bye.